Good morning from ABC 13. I'm Tom Cook. And I'm Samika Knight. Here's the very latest news for you. It is back to school today for more than 124,000 students in our area. Students return to Alvin, Anahuac, Barbers Hill, Channel View, Crosby, Danbury, Dayton, Hardin, and Hitchcock. Also returning, hold, sorry. Dicetta? Dicetta. Can, I'm sorry. Montgomery, Pearland, Spring Branch, and Sweeney. All those districts are back in business. All right, well, it was a busy night for Centerpoint or crews was it ever? working to restore power to 30,000 people left in the dark uh, after a strong storm lines are moved through. Yeah, they rumbled through last night, and many of you sent pictures and video of that lightning that was lighting up the sky. That includes this from ABC 13 viewer Anthony DeSimone. Lightning from the storms is believed to have injured three construction workers in Iowa Colony in Brazoria County. Police tell us a lightning strike hit that home right there that was under construction on Melmac Drive. The electricity apparently traveled through the home and hit two workers inside, and a third was hurt after he fell on his back. The arriving officers took over performing CPR on one of those men who wasn't breathing. He was taken to the hospital this morning. He remains there in critical condition. It's an international supermodel. What are you talking about? That is me. I think I was five years old here. This was probably before second or third grade. Sort of tried to flatten my hair out. Probably about 10 years old. But back then, my mom didn't know the trick to use gel. Just got braces for the first time. It was a double-breasted suit with the red bow tie. You see those chiseled features? She just sort of like used one of those like really painful brushes. I literally wanted to wear it to school every day, according to my mom. This morning, a federal appeals court has granted a stay of execution for a Houston man who was set to die tonight. He had murdered a Houston couple. Judges say 31-year-old Dexter Johnson is intellectually impaired, and that disqualifies him from the death penalty. He was convicted of carjacking, killing Maria Aparice of Sugarland and her boyfriend, we know, both of Houston in 2006. Attorneys say Johnson's IQ is 70, well below the average of 100. Today, the man charged with murder in the death of that 11-year-old boy is scheduled to be, be in court. He's Andre Jackson. He's accused of fatally stabbing Josue Flores while Josue was walking home from school on the north side. That was back in 2016. Charges against Jackson were later dropped, but earlier this year, they were reinstated and a new murder charge was put up against him after DNA tests linked Jackson to evidence. According to police, they say he is only the only suspect in the case. Jackson posted a YouTube video before his new arrest saying he is innocent. All right, now to one of the most watched stories on ABC13.com right now. We are waiting to get the mug shots and charges against a trio of thieves who robbed a bank inside the gallery furniture store. Police say those suspects wore masks and they demanded money inside the store last night on the North Freeway. As they escaped, a security guard saw the suspect's license plate and then reported it to police. Mattress Mac is now thanking deputies for catching these guys. It's uh, tragic that those type of people exist in our society, but they do, and HPD did a great job of apprehending them uh, faster than I could ever imagine. Well, police chased the suspects until they crashed, actually, crashed that getaway car and then got caught. The stolen cash was recovered, and the robbers were then taken back to the bank to be identified. Thankfully, no one was hurt. All right, happening today, the state will release report cards on how your child's school is performing. The TEA ratings will give students, or in fact schools, an A, B, C, D, or even an F. The Houston ISD School Board will meet in a closed executive session later this morning. Then the district will release those grades at 11.30 this morning with a news conference at Kashmir High School. If HISD schools do not pass, it could result in a state takeover. The TEA has already recommended taking over the school board because it says open meeting laws were disobeyed. We'll post the school ratings inside the ABC 13 mobile app. Channel View ISD goes back to class today, and some of the changes this year include an expanding CTE program, which will now include a culinary program. All the district employees will get a pay raise this year, and during the school year, the district will also be using a $195 million bond to address campus renovations and campus security. Students at Angleton High School got a big surprise to help start the year prepared. The Detroit Lions quarterback and former Wildcat Quandre Diggs stopped by mm -hmm. along with some of his teammates. Look at them. Oh, wow. They handed out more than 100 backpacks full of school supplies. Diggs graduated from Angleton High in 2011. Mm -hmm. He and the Lions are in town getting ready to play the Texans this weekend. <laughs> and that game and energy is just two days away. Texans and Lions hoping to get their first win in the preseason. They both lost the first one. And we will bring it straight to your living room starting at 7 p.m. Saturday night right here on ABC 13. 
All right, so a final check of weather here with Alita. Good morning to you. Good morning, Samiga. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday to you. Uh, yesterday's storms definitely helped cool off or at least lower some of those temperatures. We saw our seventh day of triple digit heat today. That streak finally broken. Temperatures in the upper 90s. We will see a few rumbles of thunder as that front remains stalled out across southeast Texas and where we wherever we see the highest uh, amount of moisture is where that zone will produce some showers and storms this afternoon. Temperatures heat up into the upper 90s. There's that front that will remain stalled out here at least for another 24 to 36 hours and then eventually get washed out over the area. Future radar loop is indicating a few of those rain showers and storms that could briefly uh, dump a quick one to two inches of rain. Meanwhile, Harris, Galveston and Brazoria County under a pollution watch. The best chance for seeing those cooling downpours will be along the upper Texas coastline south of I-10. Closer you are toward our coastal communities and we're going to keep those temperatures hovering close to normal in the mid to upper 90s with daily downpours in the forecast throughout at least next week. Elisa. We are checking out your weekend drive. A look ahead to Friday night. A total closure of the Southwest Freeway southbound at the West Loop, essentially from uh, between Newcastle and South Rice. Be aware, it goes all the way through Monday morning. Please avoid the area if you don't live or work right around this interchange. It will be incredibly busy. Richmond could still be a good alternate route, although there is construction on Richmond as well. All right, and that's Eyewitness News for this morning. Thanks so much for joining us. We are also updating the ABC 13 mobile app and shout out to Hull Des Desetta. Right. Yes, yes, yes. starting school today. <laughs> shout out to you guys. Have a great day, everybody.